The House is going to vote tomorrow on whether Washington, D.C. should become the 51st state. The measure has 226 House co-sponsors. That's more than enough for it to pass. But Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says it will not even come up for a vote in the Senate. The White House says the president would veto it if it did, if it ever reached his desk. This as murals supporting statehood are popping up all over the city. It's the city where federal forces cleared protesters across from the White House with chemical gas so the president could cross the park to a photo op. While a military helicopter swooped down over city streets to chase urban demonstrators, a combat zone maneuver more suitable for Fallujah than downtown D.C. Thank you. The city's mayor could not stop any of that or troops being stationed at sacred monuments because unlike 50 states and the U.S. territories, Washington is the only jurisdiction where the National Guard answers to the president instead of to a governor. They have two senators that vote for us and speak for us and a voting representative in Congress. But we also need it to make sure that our borders aren't breached by the federal government. The capital city has 702,000 residents, more than Vermont or Wyoming. And people here pay more total federal taxes than 22 states. What the district does not have is a vote in Congress. Not since a law passed in 1801, when Thomas Jefferson was president. You've been in Congress for 17 terms. What does it feel like to never be able to vote on final passage for one of your bills? It feels like my city is not fully respected, despite paying the highest federal income taxes per capita in the United States. Eleanor Holmes Norton was born in D.C. 83 years ago, the great-granddaughter of Richard Holmes, who escaped from a Virginia slave master to find work in the nation's capital. Richard Holmes made it to freedom, but he did not make it to equality, nor have those in his lineage yet made it to equality. That's why we need statehood, at least personally. Well, I need statehood. So help me God. With no senator, D.C. residents have no say on confirming Supreme Court justices or cabinet members or other officials. Congress hasn't even debated statehood since 1993 when it lost. This deprivation of statehood is unjust. Despite strong support now in the House, most Senate Republicans are still opposed. I don't think you're going to have many in the Republican conference for that. I think our founding fathers were correct in the first place. Still, Friday's debate will give Washington a chance to protest against taxation without representation, a principle that was supposed to be settled by those founders more than 200 years ago. Well, joining me now is Pulitzer Prize-winning presidential historian and biographer John Meacham, who's the author of American Lion, Andrew Jackson in the White House, among so many other books, great books. John, thank you very much for joining us. I really needed Thanks. your perspective on this. Uh, as you know better than anyone, the capital city was created by taking land from Virginia and Maryland in 1801, and that's the last time we had any representation in Congress. Yeah, yeah it's 10 miles square is the phrase in, in the Constitution. And the original thinking was that the federal government needed a sovereign space. Uh, it was about independence, really. That's the irony of this. Uh, the, they didn't want to be in Pennsylvania, with all respect uh, to you, uh, or New York, uh, because the governors <laughs> of New York or Pennsylvania might uh, try to force them to do things. Uh, and so the idea was that it would be this kind of like um, Krypton, uh, the planet, uh, and the federal government would therefore be, be totally sovereign. I think we've outrun that logic uh, a long way back. And uh, I doubt this passes, but uh, the statistics you marshaled there, uh, as well as the uh, intellectual argument from uh, uh, Ms. Norton is, uh, is to me, uh, pretty compelling. I mean, what really brought this to the fore for a lot of us here was what happened when the president was threatening to use the Insurrection Act of, of uh, 1807, and only Washington would not have been able to object, because every other state and territory have right. governors who could say, no, thank you. And then only, you know, in a dire circumstance could the president uh, supersede that. But in this case, uh, the mayor objected to what was happening in Lafayette Park and the surrounding areas, and to no avail, because 
She doesn't mm. even control the National Guard here. Yeah. No, it's a question of sovereignty. And I think what Americans around the country have to decide is how would they feel uh, if their governor, uh, A, they don't really have one, uh, but if, if their governors and mayors were, were not able to exercise uh, basic uh, powers. And so I think the, uh, the question, obviously, creating but what would be two Democratic seats in the Senate uh, is, is, is the political reality that will make this incredibly of difficult. Course. But as a matter of, prim of prima facie justice and equality, there's no question. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.